my video tutorials on sanders that you'll find useful as you make your bowls. Part one dealt with the vertical belt sander. Part two dealt with the oscillating spindle sander. And part three is really the heart of making particularly the more advanced bowls. It's the hand sanding and tweaking that you do at the drill press, or if you use a flexible shaft or something else that holds these little gadgets. And this is what lets you do your final shaping. All right, now, when I started making bowls, the only piece of equipment that I got was this flexible sanding pad. Different companies carry them. They range anywhere in price from about $13 to $40, depending on where you buy them. And I treated myself to an extra little Velcro pad. It's a Velcro hook and loop system that helps protect the main sanding pad. All right, these are four or five dollars and a lot cheaper than replacing the whole part. This is a quarter of an inch. It chucks right into a standard drill press, which I like using because it leaves my hands free for shaping. The little discs, and I prefer the kind with the scalloped edges because it kind of cradles the edge of this and makes it less likely that you'll gouge. Doesn't eliminate it, but makes it less likely. And it just goes on and off very easily. And I have a whole assortment of grits ranging from 60 up to 600, although I seldom go up that high, I just have a few. And I found the easiest way to keep them is in a plain old cheap stationery store file folder, a card, index card holder. And I label it with the different grits. I put them in here, and as long as I don't drop it, everything stays, and it makes a very quick indexing system. And for ones, the grits that I use more frequently, I buy in packs of 50. Those I use less frequently, I buy 10 at a time. All right, now if you're doing a fairly straight-sided, uncomplicated bowl, you can use the FlexiPad to sand the inside. Let me show you what that looks like. All right, chuck this into the drill press. And basically, I'm going to hold this up against the flat side of this and move it gently. Gentle is the word. You don't want to sand in more gouges than you said. That's like ironing. You don't want to iron in more creases than you iron out. Same principle. the bottom is on so that you have access all the way down. And you can also use this to bevel the outside edge if you want to get a nice finished edge on it, like this. outer edge. If it gets to be too sharp an edge, you can always sand it down. You can do the same thing from the other side to contour it the other way with this. And this is the tool of choice for all outside sanding. This bowl, which I started sanding on the vertical sand, it was fairly irregular. And when you use this, you can tweak it to make sure that you don't take off too much wood in spots that may be a little thinner. And you can also use this to contour the base. Right, I have a fairly aggressive grit here. And once you get the rough sanding done, then you take it through the grits, being careful to sand out any swirl marks. Some would show it more visibly than others, so you have to take a careful look so that you end up with a nice finished look on the bowl. Now, 
on this lamination, which should be something very interesting, with inlays and veneer and stuff like that, I will use this also on the outside, and I might use this to get a look to see how it's going to look like this. At this point, the veneer is just starting to show nicely. We're just starting to get the beginning of a curve. And that's the way you would do shaping on the outside. So this really is the workhorse of the sanders that you use in the drill press. And as I said before, I like using it in the drill press because I can manipulate it with both hands. And this drill press has a deep enough, a big enough separation between the post and the chuck for me to do this. All right, and that's basically all you need to know to get you started using the flexible sanding pad.